So this morning we are going to be doing Skyward Elementary. This is a 30 minute PD on um, kind of just a little overview of, of Skyward um, for elementary. So I'm going to go ahead and oops, share my screen. And we will get started. All right. So again, you are um, participating right now in the Canyons U Mini PD, just as a reminder, um, as mentioned in Tech Summit last week, or if you did it online, Canyons U um, is actually a self-paced kind of course in Canvas. And we have decided to do mini Canyons U Mini PDs for um, a variety of different topics. So those topics came to you in an email from your ed tech coach at the beginning of the week. And here's the schedule again for those, um, for those little mini professional developments. We will be doing Skyward Elementary again next week on the 14th. If you find this interesting or as somebody you know needs to, to come back and watch this, we'll be doing it again. And we're also recording all of these so they'll be available for future use. As a reminder, all of the things we do in Canyons and with the EdTech um, tools and department, we go back to the um, multi-tiered system of supports and the framework should be familiar with that. Um, again, here's a little um, snapshot, a little infographic of all the topics that we're doing. And now that school has been pushed back a week, we are considering doing um, additional uh, little mini PDs like this that following week. So keep an eye on your email from um, your ed tech coach and see if there's anything else that might be of interest uh, for you. So your learning intentions today, I'm going to sort of show you how to do the first things I hear on the list. Um, unfortunately, since we it is a student, there's student information in your Skyward accounts, I'm not able to present it fully. So I took a bunch of screenshots and we'll be showing you the um, all of the, the things that I can show you where kids' names would show up. I blocked them out. Um, and so you'll, you'll be able to follow along a little bit better when you're logged into your account, but also be aware that since we are not enrolled or your students are not enrolled in Skyward right now, some things look a little bit different. So um, it might be worth it once your uh, classes are set up to go back in and maybe even watch some more of these tutorials or, or kind of explore and have your ed tech coach help you with that. So, oops, I skipped ahead too far. So our learning intentions, we're gonna post daily attendance and show you where to do your lunch count and you can make a seating chart. We are gonna view student indicators, alerts, and show you where you can see um, the information on your students. We're also gonna show you how to use the message center. So you can send messages directly from Skyward to your students, um, to the parents in your class. And then we're gonna show you the grade book, how to add events, which are assignments, and change your display options. So you will know you're successful when you can use Skyward Student for regular daily tasks like lunch and lunch count and grade book. So my name is Danae Gothard. I am an ed tech coach in um, three elementary schools. And then we also have Vanessa Cicero on. She will be going through the second part of the day, or the day, the training. Um, and so we'll jump right in. So again, I'm just presenting my screen. If you do not have Skyward bookmarked, if you go to the Canyons School District homepage, and this really mostly applies for new, um, new people, but because um, if you've been if you've been in the district before and you just start typing in Skyward, it pops up. But you'll want to get to the Canyons District homepage, and under the Employees um, drop down you're gonna click on Skyward. Couple things here, these are two buttons that you will use, um, the Skyward student and employee access. So uh, at employee access, that's gonna be stuff like your um, information, time off shows up there, um, W2s, your lanes, the steps that you're on, that's all employee stuff. It's the same login that you use for student uh, Skyward student and employee access, but just make sure that 
you are going to the Skyward student. The page will look like this. Make sure it says student production and then you'll log in here. Again, I'm not going to log in. Um, well, actually, I am going to log in, but I want to show you. I actually already kind of got to a teacher's account to show, but then I've got to scoop back and go to our screenshots. So just a couple things on this main page when you first um, when you first log in. Your teacher access is where you're going to go every day. This is where you take attendance. This is where you're going to take um, uh, and put your grades. But just keep note down here, this is a great place for um, programs uh, that are helpful. Actually, the ed tech department does um, through I through ISD, the ed techs kind of put this little flyer together. So it's got all sorts of different professional development, upcoming events, and so on. So I'm going to back up now and get to my screenshots. Again, I wish I could show you it live, but you'll be able to kind of explore. So when you click on that teacher access tab, the first one, and I'm going to skip over the grade book and students and classes, but the first thing that's on our task list today is post daily attendance. So once you click on post daily attendance, this screen will pop up here. Uh, I'm in a second grade class. So the only difference if you're in third, uh, no, fourth or fifth is you will see science, a science grade book. Um, but really in the in the attendance, you're going to be focusing on these two pieces or three pieces, my by name, by seating chart and assign seats. So the first one we're going to look at for attendance. So this is an everyday thing. This is where you're going to take attendance and your lunch count. You're going to click on by name. It doesn't matter which homeroom you choose here. It, it doesn't matter. Just pick one of them. So I thought I took, oh, there it is. I was scooted ahead a little too far. Um, once you click in there, all of the, um, again, we're not on a school day, but on when you're on a school day, all of these pre uh, present will be filled in with a little dot. So it, it's nice because most of the time, most of them are present and all you would need to do is click the little dot over for tardy or click the dot over for absent. Um, the question comes up a lot about tardy. Really, you need to check in with your school um, on an individual school basis of, when you're marking tardies. Oftentimes there's a tardy bell. And if they come in either after that tardy bell with like a pink slip from the office, that means the office will be adjusting that tardy bell uh, or that tardy um, in Skyward. So you'll just need to talk to your secretary or principal about what, um, what the policies are at your school. Also check in the time. Often they want you to have um, your attendance in by a certain time. Big thing there is the lunch count because then that that indicates to the lunch ladies, you know, how many um, how many you know lunches to make for your uh, for the day. So again, right here, usually there is a little box that has um, choice one, choice two, choice three. That is where you're going to put your lunch count in. So however you set your classroom up, whether it's raise your hand if you want lunch choice one or they you know, come in and they move their stick to lunch choice one, that's where you're gonna enter it. Check again with your secretary. If they come in tardy with a slip, you um, likely don't have to adjust that. The, they take that lunch count at the office and make those adjustments for you. Um, if that little box is not here, happens often if the little lunch count box is not there there will be again we're not on a school day there will be a button right here that says show survey i think it says show survey questions the survey questions are your lunch count so just click on that little button the box will pop up and you're able to do your lunch count um, from there also on this page, and I'll show you in another place too, I believe, again, I can't show you with student information, but anytime you see these little um, e these little letters, these are your indicators. So you'll be able to see it on your, really on all of your, anytime you see a student's name, which again, I have them fuzzed out here, 
if you hover over that indicator, it will tell you what it means. So I just know for sure that this M, it means that their media release has been signed. Um, that all happens. Any of these indicators happen when the uh, parent signs their student up for enrollment at the beginning of the year. Um, other things, and I don't have any examples right now, but other things are if they have a medical issue, either you know they're allergic to something or they're on a 504 or an IEP. Anytime you see one of these indicators, all you have to do is hover over it and you'll see what that indicator means. Um, if it's anything that has to do with like a health type issue, just be aware, but you should also have already been contacted either by the office or by the school nurse to go over what that condition is or what, what those indicators, you know, if there's anything that you need to be aware of as a teacher in the class. Um, Vanessa, is there anything else you wanted to add before I keep scooting along? Maybe something I forgot? Nope, that sounds good to me. Okay, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna again keep going through my screenshot. So if we come back to post or teacher access and that post daily attendance button, the next thing I'm gonna show you is the seating chart. So again, it looks a little bit different right now. Um, and this is just a small piece of, of the seating chart. You'd usually see more students. Um, what's great about this is that if you click on show pictures, you would be able to see the most recent um, little, you know, school picture that they took and had um, right there. So it's great for when you have subs, you can print off the sheet and have their seating chart with their cute little face um, and they're able to take attendance from there. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a great, yeah, it's a great, great tool. Now, if you want to change that and actually make a seating chart, which I think is actually a really great idea, especially as kids are coming back in the time that we're coming back, um, this will help when you need to kind of contact trace if there's if any issues come up in your classroom. You can see a snapshot of where kids were um, and who who might have come in contact with them. So again, if I go back, I'm trying to kind of go through like I would be if I was on the on a website here. This assigned seats. So when you click on assign seats, you'll see all of the students here. Again, I just took a small little, little snapshot. Um, you can show the pictures again here. You can clear that seating chart. But what you do is you choose the student and then you click swap. And it takes a little bit of kind of messing around, clicking and swapping. But eventually you'll start to see how it works. And again, I wish I could show you, but I'm not able to do that in a live demonstration because they would have student names on them. So if that's something um, you're trying out and having issues with, let your ed tech coach know and they'd be happy to come in and help with that. Vanessa, did I miss anything on those that I have? Or anything I don't think so. Add? Great. Okay, awesome. All right. So the next thing, again, if you go back to home, you'll click the teacher access button here. And the next one we're gonna go over is my classes. And again, I wish I could show you live, but we're gonna just kind of click through these screenshots. You'll see, again, the list of homeroom, homeroom, same homeroom, it just has to be listed twice because of how Skyward is. Um, language, math, and if you're in the upper grades, you'd see science. Simply choose on the, the class options next to any of these classes. In elementary, all of the classes are there when you click on my classes and class options are the same because you have the same group of students. Where this gets a little different is in when you're in middle school and high school, your class periods are different and have different groups of students. So in elementary, pick and choose on any of these class options. Over on the left hand side, you'll see shortcuts to several different um, different options. The one I'm gonna show you today is Message Center. So this is where you can message your class, either the whole class or, and I'm gonna show you the other spot where you can pick a class but then select certain uh, certain students. So here over on, oops, whoops, whoops, scoot back down. Where did I go? There we go. On the right-hand side, 
you'll have add, mul add message for multiple classes. That means you, you could choose, again, this would be more secondary. It, you could choose multiple classes that have different students in them. You're only one teacher with the same group of students, so that would be your whole class. If you choose this one, add message for current class, it would choose your current class, but then down below you're able to choose um, multiple students. So maybe you had a group of five students, you know, in a group that you want to send a certain message to, and you would just select those five students. Um, but you can do it as the whole class or a select group of students. Once you open either of those, this little panel is going to show up. This is where you put kind of just like an email, you would put your, your message summary here and then type in your details. You can add, and I, you know, there's not a really a way that I'm aware of any way to add images, but what you can do is add links. So maybe you made something in Google Docs or a slideshow that you want them to watch. You can take that link, copy it and paste it in so that, that parents have access to that. Um, or you would just type in your message, hey, reminder, field trip is on Thursday, or, you know, projects are due, don't forget, or science fair is coming up, you know, something you want to just kind of send out to the whole group and just do a short text here. Um, you're posting options, so you would just kind of go through go through these. Put, uh, put the date, um, post to Skyward family, allow, you know, and you're just going to have to pick and choose based off of what you, what you want, but... Family access, student access, that's where it's going to be posted to. So parents would get this message um, in their Skyward account when they're logged in. Post my email address for parents to view. Maybe you want that on, maybe you don't. Post my email address for students to view. Again, on or off. Post to a calendar. Um, email options. So again, I wish I could click on these and show you, but with student names, I can't. You'll just kind of have to go through, and if you have questions, again, reach out to your ed tech, and they'll let you um, let you know individually some of these different options. Um, Vanessa, is there anything else on that one? Nope. Doing All great. Right. Sweet. Okay, cruising through. All right, the next thing, and I again, this is just a little screenshot. If you go back home, choose teacher access. My grade book, there again will be all of your options for um, homeroom, same for homeroom, language, math, and the upper grades would see science. A couple quick things that the homeroom, either option, is going to be where you have your learning skills. Okay, so your actively participates, respects others, cooperates those learning tasks. That's where you're going to add those when it comes down to getting ready for um, report card. The subjects are for the respective subjects. So language will have all your language standards, math will have the math, and so on and so forth. Um, Vanessa, I think that's where you're going to pick up. So she's going to get into the learning skills actually open up a grade book because in the grade book we are able to hide student names. So I'm going to stop presenting and let Vanessa finish and show us the grade book. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so I am going to take you through um, adding grades to the grade book. Just some reminders for me so I don't forget. Um, so like Danae was saying, the gradebook is divided up um, by report card headers or main categories. And then students don't receive grades for those headers. They You put the grades under each of the learning skills or subject tasks underneath. So for example, here is my homeroom gradebook, which is learning skills that Danae was talking about. And you can notice everything that's in this darker blue are my headers. And then underneath, these would be all of the um, learning skills that I can put grades in for. So actively engaged, um, respects the rights and opinions of others. So you'd go in and you'd put individual grades for each of these columns in the light blue. The grade book is also a condensed version of all of your standards. So you'll notice when you go into like math or science or social studies, 
the what you see in the grade book is not the exact thing that you see for the standards that you are teaching. So you want to make sure that you know which standards you're teaching, which ones they filter into for the report card. Um, and the nice thing is that in the curriculum map, they have actually, um, when you go to your manuals, you can find pick whichever grade you're in. And then from here on the left, when it opens up, you will see at the very bottom standards based grading and then your grade level that you selected. And I am going to go ahead and make this bigger. And then when you go through your standards based grading, here again is a snapshot of the report card. So you can see your learning skills and then it has language arts and then each of the items that you would be grading underneath. And then this is the one I'm looking for. So the report card standards. So it shows the speaking and listening. And then underneath it'll show you all of the standards that are going back to the report card um, skill that you are grading. And then you can even go into more detail with the prog learning progressions and different things like that. So I just wanted to quickly show you that resource. Okay, so now we're gonna go into now I know where to put my grade, how do I put a grade in? So grades are actually called events in Skyward. So anytime you have done an activity or something that you have a grade for and you wanna put it into Skyward, you are going to find what where you wanna put it. So for example, I am going to just do the first example right here under the learn activities. And I'm gonna go events, add event, and right here, I'm already in my learning skills category. You could also change this. Right now, this school doesn't have all of their um, items, all of their grade books in yet. So you would see the different grade books if you wanted to change there. Then you can select from any of your skills. So I'm going to select actively engage in learning. Then you can write a quick description. Um, completed we'll just say completed worksheet for right now <laughs> and then you can come down you can add a detailed description if you wanted you can change and assign the due dates or just leave them the same then you're going to scroll down and you can select what I noticed was you can actually select multiple learning skills if this one grade you want it to go to multiple places you just want to make sure that it applies directly to each of those appropriately if you do that. So once you have filled out these items, then you're going to come over to the right and you're gonna hit save and grade if you wanna put it in automatically. Save and back will take you to your grade book, that main front page, and then save and add another would be if you just wanna quickly add another event and then you can go back in later to grade them all. I usually just do save and grade because I'm ready to put my grade in. So I'm gonna hit save and grade. And then you'll notice here, you have all of your students on the left. Right now they're just numbers because we're suppressing um, the student name, but you would see the student names. This is where you enter the grade. You could come in and just enter it one at a time. Oop. It does not exist. So what you can do is overwrite. So assign grades. So right so, over here. Vanessa, sorry, yeah. I think because you're in learning skills, it's not a it's not a mastery or whatever. Yeah. It's the consistent usually. Yeah. yeah. So basically what you can do is put in the C U S R for here. And like um Danae was saying, if you're in math or so social study. I don't think we have a social studies, but if you're in math or language arts, you can put the one, two, three. Um, and I think that they are one, Danae, you're going to have to remind me, are they no, the mass, the mastered, not yet mastered, two, not yet mastered, and three mastered, right? So they come with the number and the letter at the beginning. I don't think the number's on there anymore. I think There's it's just no ten. number. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So I'm sorry, guys, I wasn't able to preview that since this school has only put in their um, learning intentions so far. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a C because most of my students have gotten a 
they are consistently meeting this skill. And then I can overwrite, for example, if I already had some in here, but I wanted to overwrite them like this C here, I can click overwrite. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And now everybody has a C and then I can just go through and I can change the other friends who I think um, need to have something else. So that's a little bit faster way to do it when you know that the majority of your students have the same grade. So that's how you would mass assign. But like you saw before, you could go through and individually input each one as well. And over here, just like Danae was saying, it gives me my snapshot of what I could actually give. So for learning intentions, these are my items. And then if I were in math or language arts, it would show me either the numbers or the not yet mastered, depending on what we're doing this year. And then you just go ahead and hit save. And you'll notice that now under the main category of actively engaged in learning, I have one event or one grade. Then as you add more events, this will this list will get longer in between. So as your grade book grows, you'll have your light blues, and then in between each of the light blues, you'll have all of your events that you have for each category. One thing to keep in mind is that Skyward does not at the end of the semester calculate a final grade for that semester for you. This is where you put in all the events that at the end of the semester, you would look at, you know, person number one, you would go down the list of all the events for that one category. And then as a teacher, you would use kind of the anecdotal notes you've taken, personal experiences with that student. You take all of those things into account and then you can assign um, the actual grade for the report card for this category. And Vanessa, I just peeked real quick. And yes, yeah. it is the number when you're in a grade book, like a language, math or science, there is the number and the letter, the okay, one. And I took a screenshot. So when you're done, or actually it's at the bottom of our presentation, Vanessa, it's the last slide. Perfect. Just pull that up. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So, and I was double checking while she was presenting. So thank you for, for checking up. Perfect. And I think maybe then at the end of the year, that's when like that very final grade is when they remove the numbers and you just have mastered, not yet mastered um, for the very end of the year. I believe that's how it works. Okay, and then last we have display options. These are options that you can use to personalize your experience in Skyward. There aren't very many things that I actually use very often, but Danae was reminding me about the grade period display. This is a really good one for if the semester has ended, but you haven't actually put in all of your grades yet. And then you go to into Skyward, you try and put in grades, but it's moved on to semester two. In order to get back to semester one, in order to put your grades in, you would select up here, display options. Well, I'm just gonna click on them. And then right over here, you have grade period display. When you click on grade period display, whichever box, box or boxes is checked are the the trimesters that you can edit. So if I'm if it moves to trimester two, then I would check trimester one, and then I could go ahead and hit save, and then I can go ahead in and edit my first trimester grades. Um, so that's a handy trick for when you're stuck in trimester two, but you still need to put in some grades for your trimester one. Danae, did you have anything to add for um, display options besides that one item? No, um, usually that's the one that comes up most commonly is, you know, we've moved on to try to and they need to put the grades in that example you just gave. Um, there are some other, you know, different like student displays, but I, I don't really get into them unless a teacher has a specific need. There's nothing I go in and have to change on a regular, regular basis. So. Perfect. Um, Cause yeah, um, I haven't, I don't really fiddle with much of these things. No. Word. I just do pretty much the basics. So um, if there's any questions, I saw a couple come through the chat that I think we've addressed. Um, if not, we're gonna stop the recording. Thank you for participating today. And again, this will be, uh, it was recorded. So you'll get a information on where this will be housed. Um, and we're doing it again next week on the 14th. So thanks for coming and I'm gonna hit the stop recording.